Hi guys, this is VTech uh, with uh, Blueberry Hill. Uh, we're doing something a little different today. Uh, we're actually uh, fixing the F-350 to 2002. It's got the uh, dreaded injector cup failure. It's got a cracked injector cup. It's been bleeding uh, oil into the combustion chamber on uh, one or more cylinders. Uh, we're going to find out how many, uh, possibly two. I did find one really cracked and one potentially uh, failed O-ring, which was probably bleeding oil into the cylinder. It made it really hard to start. So there's a lot of videos on uh, YouTube about uh, pulling the injectors. I'm just going to time lapse this. Basically, just undo that one little bolt on the bottom side. I don't take the oil vents off like some videos uh, say to do. I just don't want to mess with it. So as long as you pry underneath that uh, the, the metal piece, not the actual vent, you'll be fine. Um, anyway, uh, get them out and then take a look. So here are the four injectors. Uh, the one on the left is number one, and then uh, the one. Uh, well, whatever whatever number cylinder it is, it's the first one on the front of the motor, and the uh, one on the right is the fourth one on the passenger side. Um, I don't really care the firing order of these things. So um, here are the four injectors. The third one is the one that's uh, caused all the problems. When we pull the uh, the uh, cup on that, it's it's very cracked. I'm surprised it can puke that much fuel through that little crack, but it is what it is. Anyway, the O-ring is just totally annihilated on this one. I'm sure because it was sitting. Um, Whatever failed, it's sitting in coolant and uh, fuel, and I'm sure none of that likes that. So it was very, very cracked, very pitted, and uh, uh, the main cause of all the issues. So we're going to find out further in the video that uh, the, the third piston on the uh, passenger side is also like that, but it, the cup was not cracked. The O-ring failed, though. So here's the, uh, real quick, well, it's just, this is real time. Uh, using a rosewood diesel um, uh, cat tap and uh, then the actual installer tool as well worked fantastic uh, had no issues whatsoever just shove it in the hole the, the top uh, part keeps it nice centered on the uh, injector hole um, and then this is uh, when I'm screwing in the tap it took about uh, like they, they say four to five turns I don't know if I went full turn or not but uh, yeah, probably three at least three turns right um, then you back the nut down. Um, you'll see me squirt some WD-40 um, on that nut in a second. It was hard to turn before I did that, um, so I, I quit and I actually sprayed WD-40 on it. And then it just came, the, the cup came out very, very easily. Um, so very happy that there's a WD-40. And then I just uh, do another couple turns with the uh, socket and pop, then it comes out. Um, overall, the, the ease of this job is, is I don't find this job very hard, it's just tedious. Um, I think the book says something like 10 hours worth of work. That's kind of what it is because I'm not moving fast on this. It's very hot out, uh, so I was just taking my time. But regardless, not a difficult job, just a tedious job. So I'm not going to show you doing every single one of these uh, cylinders. Uh, I'm just going to do another one here. Uh, this was the easy access. These were my first two I pulled uh, as a test because I've never used this tool before. Um, and it worked extremely well, uh, well worth the money. I've, I've seen other uh, versions of this tool and other YouTube uh, videos, and uh, I can't, I, I, I'm not a big fan of uh, busy work. I'd rather have the right tool for the right job. Um, some, some have a tool that spans this washer thing, uh, spacer across where the bolts are for holding the injector down, and you gotta take a lot more stuff off, which um, I try not to do. Um, so a little, little more to do work, but uh, anyway, you know, a tool is a tool. You gotta use it the best you can. Um, I did spend the extra dollars on this one. Um, if you're trying to save fifty dollars, I urge you to just get this tool and be done with it. Uh, works very well. It might sit on the shelf for the next five years. Who knows? Uh, but I do have friends with F-250s and other other similar vehicles that uh, could require this. Anyway, uh, that's my two cents on that. So these two cylinders I just did uh, basically. Uh, I did it real time. I didn't speed this up at all. So you, you know, pains and struggles of turning a socket real slow. <laughs> um, access is fun. You know, these these the access to the underhood. You got to lay down sometimes and stuff to get to the back back cylinders. But aside from that, um, not a big deal. So uh, it worked out pretty good. And you see that you just do a few turns on this uh, on this puller, and uh, I guess the, since it's brass, it can't be in there with that much force, right? So you pop them out. It loose. You can see. You can tell when it loosens up that uh, it's coming out. And there it is. So 
So how do you get the, the, the cap off the tap? Well, I just use lock pliers on the nose of it and uh, a big monkey wrench and off I go. So it's always uncomfortable doing this kind of stuff because you're tweaking far away from each other. <laughs> it's, you can definitely rack your knuckles on some, but it wasn't hard. It was, it, they're not on there that hard, right? They're, they cut into about four or five uh, uh, threads and that's about it. So just to show you the uh, the cup that came out of the number, the third cylinder on the uh, driver's side, this is the one that's cracked. Uh, there's about an inch long crack. Camera's going to focus in a second here. Hold on. There you go. So there it is. Um, it's about an inch long. It doesn't look like much, but I guess under pressure, you know, it pisses out of there, puts the coolant into the, uh, I mean, uh, the fuel into the coolant and pressurizes your system. The bad part is that cylinder injector also had a uh, very bad O-ring. So here you see me using a, a drill with a small arbor set up 90 degree um, and I got the brushes that were for the cleaning uh, of the injector holes and I wasn't going to do that by hand, that would have been ridiculous because the uh, that seal stuff is kind of hard. Um, and here you see me using a rag, it's, it's soaked in acetone uh, which cleans up the holes really well. And I went through, make sure, I I did look down there, I hadn't didn't show you that on the uh, video. So I didn't remove the oil sprout that uh, is on the uh, injector, I actually just left them on there. And then when I'm hammering them, hammering them down, I make sure the bottom plate is pushed to the inside of the, uh, the valley of the motor. So it sits on the front bolt, and then I put the, the bottom side bolt down and everything's good. I use a rubber mallet uh, to slot, softly uh, install the... So here's a, the passenger side injectors. Uh, number, the third one back, again, looks kind of funky. The O-ring was dead again. Uh, the other ones look fairly okay. I mean, it uh, didn't look like there was any blow-by or, or anything leaking there. Um, so that's it is what it is. So in uh, doing O-rings, I also decided to do a shim kit on the uh, the injectors. Um, yeah, you can buy new injectors for 1600 bucks or whatever they are, um, but I decided to do a shim kit, just rebuild it. You take the uh, solenoid off, there's an armature plate right there with a spacer. So they claim that the armature is supposed to be four thousandths of an, an inch off the plate. And uh, to check that, we have a couple of feeler gauges. We have a 002 and a 004. Um, and most of the injectors I pulled off uh, had a very a tight O2. So the instructions say to increase it to four. Uh, just put a four uh, spacer for four thousandths of an inch for the armature, and then space the solenoid five thousandths above that so that they don't hit each other. Um, I guess there's supposed to be a tiny, tiny little air gap. I'd call it an oil gap. <laughs> and uh, the you see the little packets of washers. They're tiny. You know, two thousandths of an inch is not a whole lot. So. Um, you have to be careful on picking them up because you, you can sometimes pick up more than one. But regardless, um, take the statue, the armature off. Uh, that was they, they provide a tool for that. In fact, they provided two. Um, and I had to put uh, another little socket in place so that the armature wouldn't rotate while I'm check, trying to take that nut off. Uh, not a big deal. Just have to get a way to stop it from rotating. That's what I did. Um, so I popped that off. The video angle is not that great. I, I actually should have put it in front of the uh, table. I put it on the side thinking that was better, but obviously it's not. Anyway, I pull the armature off um, and then uh, after checking the, the gap and then uh, install a proper washer. And they have washers that specifically say solenoid and armature different. So um, mine were pretty consistently tight on the 2000 inch. So I put in a 4000 inch uh, spacer and then the 5000 inch for the solenoid. And that seemed to do the trick according to the instructions. Uh, you'll see similar stuff uh, being talked about for other shim kits uh, on YouTube as well. I, I took my time on this. I didn't really rush anything. Um, I was just trying to keep things nice and clean. Uh, the kit provided new bolts for the armature. Not really sure why, but it is what it is. Um, put the proper spacer on, screw it down, tighten it down. And everything is uh, inch pounds here. Um, I, didn't, I have an inch pound torque wrench. I didn't care to use it. Uh, I've been wrenching on cars for long enough where yeah, I can kind of tell the feel on the uh, how much torque needed to come off and how much uh, I can apply. Uh, the rule of thumb, a small bolt or, or screw is a little torque. Big big things, big torque. Kind of makes sense. Anyway, things like an aluminum, I actually use a torque wrench, but for something like this, uh, I felt it was okay to just do, do it by hand. Uh, again, been doing it a while.
there here to see me tightening the armature uh, bolt. Uh, I used a little help of another socket and uh, clean it up. The orientation of that plate is important. The top side of the injector, you see the oil uh, valley there, uh, or vent, uh, goes, the, the lines go horizontal to that. And of course the plug for the solenoid is at the top of the injector as well. So you make sure you orientate that properly. Um, so now you put the right spacers on. Uh, I made sure I, the, the armature was nice and flat and then now I put the spacers the shims on the solenoid again they're all labeled armature and solenoid uh, I think they're the same material so it probably doesn't matter overall but uh, they're different sizes for each so they labeled them that way um, pretty easy to install I just uh, usually had enough little tiny bit of oil or sweat on my finger just to pick them up with the tip of my finger and put them on didn't always work <laughs> but anyway got her done pretty easy put it all together just rotate the head over, put it to the injector, and then use the uh, supplied uh, sockets to put everything together. These are star sockets, I believe. So. There we torque everything by hand. So uh, again, inch pounds, be careful, do not snap these. Uh, I, I think that'd be a pain in the butt trying to get these uh, out. Anyway, there's the, uh, the shimmed injector. I always did the shims first, um, and then, uh, just so I don't manhandle the injector with fresh o-rings on it. So the o-rings are funny. There, there's a metal one at the very bottom, top uh, near the head of the, uh, the injector. Um, I always started taking the with the copper uh, washer, whatever its job is. Don't know. Um, pry that up. Uh, some were kind of carboned up a little bit. They came off okay though, regardless. Once I got them off a little bit, then I could pull them off by hand. Um, and then I cleaned up the the tip of the injector with the uh, scouring pad. Uh, 3M uh, red scouring pad. I, I like using those on metal. It does a very nice job on cleaning things without uh, being too, too aggressive on the uh, on the metal itself. Anyway, I used a carburetor kit. Um, I like using the Rhino one to pull O-rings off. I just get underneath it and then just kind of pull with the hoop towards the side that I'm trying to pull the O-ring off of. Uh, works great. Uh, no hassle, no fuss, no nothing. So there's uh, four O-rings on here and a metal plate. Uh, plate, a little washer, uh, spacer, I guess, keeps, uh, I'm not sure, you know, the purpose of all that stuff is, uh, but there's a metal one, the kit came with a brand new metal uh, spacer as well, I'm not sure what the point of changing those out, because I can't see any wear issues on that or whatever, but I replaced it all anyway, um, just following the instructions, uh, it's like a, a ring and a piston, right, it's kind of, it's got an open end and you just kind of like move it on, on the side of a the injector and it comes off pretty easily so keep everything nice and clean I got all the oil, uh, old oil off um, of course I'm gonna do an oil change after this as well as coolant of course because it's, uh, it's all contaminated anyway uh, but uh, so we're gonna put the, the new o-rings um, they're from Alliant Power um, you can probably see these in other uh, YouTube videos as well um, I did follow the the better quality um, uh, videos uh, with products they were using um, I do try to stick with OEM as much as I can, uh, but some of the OEM stuff is ridiculous money. So keeping everything nice and clean, um, I'm going to use a scouring pad to clean the tip of the injector, get all the junk off, a little bit of carbon buildup on the tip, and then just clean off the, the bronze look of the uh, the tip. That's some, I don't know what kind of metal is underneath there, but it's not bronze, it's actually just discoloration from a, probably a little bit of oil blow by maybe fuel as well I don't know but clean that up make it nice and clean um, cleanliness godliness and all this kind of stuff so uh, continue along that line so once we clean everything up we start uh, installing the Alliant line power o-rings um, similar to all the uh, you know there's several YouTubes out here that uh, YouTube cha channels that have similar fixes I followed with better quality uh, hardware um, just so I don't want any failures. Don't buy Chinese O-rings and stuff like that. Just buy the right, the right stuff, uh, U.S. made, and uh, should be good. So I always uh, lubed up the O-rings. I just used uh, some old oil sitting around on the other injectors. Um, just lube it up a tiny bit, and then install first the metal. Uh, I'll call it a spacer, and then the square O-ring. And that, that sits right against that spacer, and then you have a normal round o ring. And once they're lubed a little bit, they slip on pretty good. Uh, sometimes they're 
depending on the material it is, if it's a silicone base, it's a little harder to, to uh, snap around there. The rubber ones are pretty straightforward. Here you see me using the uh, carburetor tool backwards. I use this, the round side to make the uh, flat o-ring sit against the washer nicely. Uh, don't want to nick any of these things up because uh, you'll have trouble if you do. All right, pretty straightforward. Now do the middle one. The middle one's the tough one. It's a it's a large, I believe, some kind of silicone. It's not rubber. Uh, this one was hard to put on. Um, my my fingertips were getting a little bit raw <laughs> uh, trying to put this on. I used the, the paper, the towel right there. Um, later on, I started using the the tool. Yeah, there you go. So I push with the, the round head of the tool. Be careful not to nick or scour the uh, the, the o-ring itself. And once you get it started, it comes goes on real nice sits in there pretty good you gotta wrestle with them once in a while and once it pops on you're good to go so there clean everything up and get to go the uh, the top one's pretty straightforward I'm glad they made different colors it makes sense to have different colors on these things just so you I mean you can't get it wrong anyway because they're different size but um, still so I lube it and then of course I have to use my fingers to try to get it on and, and the towel to, to help me shove it on uh, if it was hard So onto the uh, the passenger side. Here I'm removing the cup. I'm doing time lapse now because I guess you get the idea. Pop them out. I'll show you two, and then I move on to uh, putting putting the injectors in. Um, I rebuilt them all. I rebuilt all of them. I installed the injectors in the, the driver's side as you saw me do a few minutes ago. And uh, here I am just doing the same work to the uh, the driver's side. I use the brush tool on the drill. Makes really quick use the cleaning all that up uh, it's hard I can't even see in the back cylinders I have to use the camera uh, which worked kind of okay um, if you could actually get it to focus on the uh, downside hole so cleaning like I did the other side use a brush on the drill with the uh, 90 degree ar arbor on it um, clean everything as you go initial clean with the paper towels and then the uh, acetone on a cloth um, then I come by and put the uh, the cup in with the install tool with a bunch of that uh, Permatex. Uh, they, they call it sleeve retainer. Um, the the back back one was hard. I couldn't really swing the hammer. But you know when you when you seat the uh, the cups down, it'll it'll change to a very tinny sound. So you know it bottomed out. You can't go too far, right? So once it changes to a tinny sound, you're good to go. Uh, the front ones are easy, of course. And here you are. So here's a view of the, the new cups. Um, the back ones, I'm sorry, I don't have very good light back there. I guess I could have flooded it with some kind of floodlight. But anyway, they're installed. Uh, now to drop the injectors in, and we're good to go. So the injector, again, I didn't take the oil vents off. I basically just put it on there. Uh, it was hard to put the last one down, the, the last cylinder on that side down. I used the, the, the wooden end of a hammer, hammered that uh, down. And I just moved the plate over to the top side of the injector uh, when I hammered down on the uh, the injector. You can see my finger there holding it up. Once you get it in, you put the, the retaining screw down, you're good to go. I, I did lube up the O-rings with uh, a little bit of grease uh, before putting them in there. And here's here you're going to see a really pretty thing. I actually can't stand dirty. So I cleaned up the valve covers and I grabbed whatever paint I had on the shelf. It turned out to be a translucent blue that I used on the, uh, the race car <laughs> um, for some intake work and uh, I installed the uh, first I installed the injector harness that was a pain in the butt those wires are just barely long enough to get into the uh, situation there I'm messing with the glow plug wires boy somebody thought of a an easy way to install those huh anyway uh, they were a pain in the butt anyway I got the injectors connected glow plugs connected and here I come with a very schmancy shiny valve cover uh, you can see the blue tint to it. It's got it's a translucent paint. It looks really cool on aluminum. Uh, again, it's what I had on the shelf. I didn't, don't really care. I just wanted it to not be as dirty and grunky and uh, rusty as, as it was before. So I buttoned this side up uh, totally. Uh, put all the piping back in, etc. Um, and make make quick work of this. I'm still waiting on the injector harness for the, the driver's side. Uh, so uh, that's going to happen in a day or two. Uh, you'll. I'll, I might show you that, just button it up, and then of course we're going to crank it over and hope it starts crossing our fingers. 
So you're seeing me putting the uh, valve cover back on on the uh, driver's side. Um, this is all before I actually tried to start the car, uh, the truck, and uh, we'll see what happens next. Uh, didn't go quite according to plan. Um, <laughs> you'll find out in a second here why. Uh, but uh, yeah, this, this stuff isn't that difficult. A uh, little bit of access here and there. Um, I still find the injector harness a little bit more difficult to plug in. Um, the wires are, are just tight on it, and uh, you have to move the, the injector uh, connectors just perfectly to get them snapped in. Uh, here you see me just assembling all the, uh, the the junk that was on that side of the motor. Um, then I got a little module to help me with uh, a little bit of a tune. Uh, I'm not sure what it does exactly, but it does change the RPMs and how the throttle response. So here's attempt number one to start it. And guess what the motor is? It's oil hydrolocked. So, next bit of work. I wasn't happy when that happened. I, I kind of had a feeling that might happen because there was oil that drained down in the cylinders. A lot of YouTube channels oh, tell you to no. clear that out. So guess what I had to do after this? You can see I wasn't happy. And here's the attempt to start it after I spun the motor by hand. Spun it on the starter to get the oil out of the uh, cylinders by removing the fuel plugs first. Um, and there was quite a bit of oil that pissed out of those things. This it fired up fairly quickly on uh, these temps. The bad part was it's only firing on the driver's side. So it sounds like total gobby boot. I was hoping it would clear up, but not. So I knew uh, this happened to me about two, about two years ago. The injector harness on the passenger yeah. side died. Basically, all I did was put my hand on the manifold to see if it was this warm. It's not it's firing at all. Totally cold. So, um, so I ordered a new uh, harness uh, from Amazon, waited to get it, and shoved it in there. So here's attempt number one with everything connected. New harness. Aside from all the cursing I did doing this thing, uh, it's running again. So all that injector stuff, uh, the cracked uh, injector cup, and then the injector harness on the passenger side goes dead. So I just got that in from uh, Amazon, yay. Put that in, fired right up, and uh, she's purring. I don't have the valve cover on on the passenger side, so I'm gonna have to put that on so I don't piss oil out everywhere. And uh, we're just gonna run it for a little while. It's still loading up because there's still a lot of oil in the, the cylinders. Um, we'll rev that out. It's actually cleaner than it's been for a year. <laughs> so we're ahead of the game. Anyway, done. Stupid truck. <laughs>